Hello everyone, this is Anton, and today we're going to be visiting this really interesting, beautiful red dot. This is actually a dwarf star, a very, very small star, much smaller than uh, the one we have in our solar system, and very similar in size to Jupiter, because this is a star that was massive enough to start a nuclear reaction on, on the inside, but not massive enough to become a major star. This is a star known as 2Mass, 23062-05022, and this is a star you can easily find in the space engine. But it's also known as TRAPPIST-1, because TRAPPIST is actually a new project that was started in May of 2016 to discover various terrestrial planets around stars. And guess what? We've discovered three terrestrial planets around the star, and we're going to be talking about them today. If I press this button right here, you'll notice that Space Engine generates quite a lot more, but it's the first three that we're interested in. So today we're going to be talking about these three newly discovered planets and why they're so important and why they're, this star and these planets are so cool. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And let's actually take a look at these planets and this star in Space Engine. Um, now, first of all, this, what is the classification of this particular uh, star? So as you can see, it's only about 10% uh, mass of our star, of, uh, of the Sun. And it is much, much smaller. It's very close to size of Jupiter and obviously a lot cooler as well. The temperature here is much lower than on our, in our Sun. The temperature here is only about 1500 degrees Celsius. So technically, this is just an oversized uh, brown dwarf, or basically a gas giant that has now become uh, a, a small star and be began its own nuclear reaction on the inside. And in Space Engine, there's actually uh, a lot of various randomly generated planets. So if I click this, you'll see that there's more planets around it, but it's the first three that we're interested in. And uh, these three now have a designation of TRAPPIST 1B, TRAPPIST 1C, and TRAPPIST 1D. Now, the first two are really, really close to the star. So there is a star right there. And the orbit of one of these, or I guess the closest planet, only takes it about 1.5 days. So basically, one year on this planet is only about 1.5 days. And as you can see, the temperature here is relatively hot. At, the, at least according to Space Engine, it's about 150 degrees Celsius on the surface. And it's very likely that there is uh, very little liquid or any kind of water here. It's very, uh, very similar to um, Mercury in that sense. And uh, this particular planet um, is very likely to be also tidally locked, meaning that every time it orbits around its uh, parent star, it sort of faces the same direction. So here... It's always the same face of this planet that receives the sunlight, whereas the other side is basically completely dark. So if we were to settle here, we'd probably only be able to live on the uh, on this area right here, on the edge, which is known as the twilight area of the planet. Now, it's very similar to the second planet here. Oh, and by the way, the, uh, in Space Engine, this also has a very small satellite, very small moon orbiting around it, and it's right here. We can take a look at this dwarf moon. It's a warm asteroid, actually. It's not even a dwarf moon, and that's what it looks like in Space Engine. It's kind of like a almost like an egg, I guess, very similar to Haumea in shape. All right, let's take a look at the second uh, planet here. And at least in Space Engine, this second planet is a lot cooler. It's only at um, about minus 16 degrees Celsius. It's actually, it gets even warmer than that. It gets to a zero if I were to advance time a little bit. Um, and unfortunately, this planet is also very likely to be um, tidally locked and one orbit around the star it takes about 2.4 days so the year here is only two and a half days long meaning that a day is also about two and a half days long but if it's tidally locked the day here is not particularly exciting because um, you basically always face the star and the side is always dark and so once again we might be able to settle somewhere here but since this planet would not be as hot as the first planet we might be actually able to live on most lit parts of this planet. So this essentially is very similar to the first planet. It's a very desert-like looking planet, um, has almost no liquid or very likely no water on the surface. And this is probably because 
this type of a starter actually starts much hotter and then cools down over time. Unlike our starter, which actually does heat up over time and then gets really, really large and hot. Whereas this, this particular star will actually slowly cool down. And so um, when this system was much younger, these planets were actually much, much hotter. And it's very likely that during that time, all of the water was evaporated from the surface. So even though they're probably much cooler now, um, it's very, very likely that there is really no water left here. They're possibly just really dry worlds, similar in a sense to Mercury. And the second planet here also has its own moon. This is another dwarf moon, and we can kind of take a look at it as well. And this one is has a really interesting shape. And don't forget, this is all randomly generated, of course. So it may not even look that like that, or may not even, there might not even be a moon here, because this is all randomly generated. But it does have a really cool shape. Actually, almost look like a rubber ducky to me. If you kind of squint your eyes, it does look like a rubber ducky. Anyway, moving on. And so the third planet is really interesting because that particular planet is actually very likely to be in the region of space that may not have received a lot of um, sunlight, even when the star was still young. And so if there is any water in the system, it may actually be right here on the third planet in this system. As you can see, there's actually atmosphere, there's clouds, um, there's temperatures a little bit cold, but uh, it might be warmer depending on how much atmosphere is on the surface, basically depending on the, um, on the greenhouse effect of this planet. So this is kind of what it looks like from the surface here, we can actually land and look at the star. And so this is this is a beautiful planet to be on. So here, because the star is so small and doesn't actually produce a lot of light, this would always be kind of dark. Imagine um, what it's like during twilight hours on, on our planet. So right before sunrise or uh, right after su um, sunset. So this is essentially what it would look like here, even when the sun is re uh, or the star is really high up in the sky. Now in this game, uh, this planet is also tidally locked, but in reality it very likely is not tidally locked. And it's possible that this uh, planet actually receives sunlight on all sides. And it's also very likely that this planet um, is actually quite habitable. And this actually gives us a lot, of, a lot of hope, because in this particular star system there seems to be three terrestrial planets. And what's absolutely amazing is that all three of them have a mass that's very, very close to the mass of Earth. Unfortunately, space agencies, since these are randomly generated, the mass is not actually correctly represented. But in reality, we've discovered that all three of these planets have a mass that's about 10 or uh, five to 10% larger than the mass of Earth, meaning that in terms of size and mass, they are actually very, very similar to our planet. And let's actually talk a little bit more about this system. Let's try to recreate this in Universe Sandbox, just so you can see how far away it is from our planet, from our real planet, and also what it might look like in reality, because this is randomly generated, so it might actually not represent the reality very well especially since there's a lot more planets on the outskirts here, which we don't even know if they exist or not. But obviously this is a randomly generated uh, system in Space Engine. And in Universe Sandbox, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a simulation known as Near and Bright Stars. Now what this does is it essentially shows you all of the nearest stars and all of the brighter stars to our system, to our Earth. Uh, obviously, the closest star is right there, Alpha Centauri. This is at a distance of about 4.2, 4.25 light years away. And to easier represent this, we're going to enable the edit here. And you can kind of see the distance from our sun. So this is an astronomical unit. So it's going to become light years just now. And there we go. So that's about four-ish light years away. Now, how far away is this Trappist-1 star? Well, you know what? Not that far away. It's on, uh, This is about 39 light years away, so uh, about 10 times as far away as Alpha Centauri. And if we're planning to go out there and explore various objects, we might as well uh, go to that system because we know that there are three terrestrial planets. So let's so let's create this system manually. Unfortunately, this, uh, this star doesn't exist in the game just yet because that's a completely new addition to... Um, the NASA database and not NASA database, but uh, the planetary uh, star database that Astronomical Society uses. And uh, we're going to use Jupiter just because that's something we're familiar with. And we're going to add Jupiter at a distance of about 39 light years away from our sun, which is right around here. 
here it is. Now, okay, so let's rename it before we forget. So this is now known as Trappist 1. That's essentially the first uh, star that um, is discovered using this new method. And um, this star is known to have three planets around it. Now, this is obviously not a star yet, so let's make it a star by changing its, its mass. And at a point where its mass becomes something like... Let's, let's go with a much, much larger number. Um, when its mass becomes closer to about 90 or 100 Jupiters, that's when this will now become a star. A very, very small, very, very cool, but a star not, nonetheless. And there you go. It's slowly transforming into a star, and it's about to become one when the mass reaches a critical value here. There it is. So that's TRAPPIST-1. Um, this is a mass about 10% mass of sun, so it's not a very large star, and it's definitely very, very cool in terms of temperature. And, and this star obviously also has something called habitable zones. We're going to enable that by going into view and clicking on simulation right here. Or is it under view? No, it's under view. Never mind. There it is, flat. So that's the habitable zone. The green ring represents the most uh, exciting area where it's very likely there's going to be liquid water. The red area is where, where things are a little bit too hot and the blue area is where things are a little bit too cold. Now two of these planets, and here we're talking about TRAPPIST-1b and TRAPPIST-1c that I just created using uh, Universe Sandbox, are essentially a little bit too close to the star and even if, um, even if they're that close though, the temperature here might not be super, super high. Um, th this planet is about 10% larger than, um, than Earth. This, uh, this planet is about, I think this is too much, it's about 5% larger than Earth. And uh, in terms of temperature, we'll find out how hot they are when we run the simulation for a few hours. And let's discover the temperature as is generated by this game, which usually has a relatively realistic representation of things. Uh, so we don't know if this is what they look like, but this is what we were able to generate in Universe Sandbox. But then there's another star a little bit farther away. But then there's another planet called TRAPPIST-1d, that's the third planet that was discovered, that is essentially on the edge of um, the habitable zone. And th this is specifically the planet that we're really interested in now, because um, not only is it very likely to have survived the hot stage of this, this star when it was actually much younger, and when it bombarded these planets and basically stripped them of um, all kinds of atmospheric and uh, liquid water, uh, but it's very likely that this planet actually might uh, might actually have water on it and might be warm enough for us to to land on and to survive on we obviously don't know whether there is any atmosphere here and let's actually run the simulation here and see how hot they get but we're going to assume that there's a little bit of atmosphere maybe let's just say about one atmospheric pressure of atmosphere and uh these two other planets might not have any atmosphere because of the proximity to the star now unfortunately here i think the star is a little bit too hot it's it's actually much cooler than this and so this uh, habitable zone should be moved a little bit closer toward the center. Uh, but nevertheless, this is still a relatively realistic representation of what the system might look like if we were to land here. And we'll actually know a lot more about these three planets in after 2018 when James Webb Telescope launches because we'll be able to use that telescope to observe the infrared radiation from these three planets and find out more about their atmosphere and possibly even their composition as well because that telescope will be able to uh, determine what these three planets actually have on their surface. But what's really exciting about this finding is that we now are absolutely certain that these tiny stars, these uh, almost not stars, these brown dwarfs, um, have these large planets orbiting around them, and it's very likely we'll find a lot more in the future. And so uh, these tiny stars might actually be the best places for us to detect life on Earth-sized planets, and it's very likely that if we ever find a terrestrial planet, it's going to be around a much smaller star than our sun, uh, and there is my, there might be actually be also water on them because uh, the radiation here is not high enough to strip um, everything from the surface of the, these planets. And interestingly, scientists who discovered this planet even stated that if we ever find life anywhere in the universe, it's probably going to be around a much smaller, much cooler uh, dwarf star than it is to, to be around a much larger star, even a star like our sun. 
But to me, what's actually exciting is that um, the way that uh, this particular planetary system was discovered, it was actually completely by accident. What these scientists were doing, they were actually testing the um, La Silla Observatory in Chile, uh, which is a very large telescope located there. And they actually wanted to see if their new technique makes sense. And they wanted to, to test and, and find out if it's actually going to be able to find any planets. And to their surprise, the first star they used, which was this star right here, uh, had like three terrestrial planets orbiting around it. So next time they use this technique, we might discover even more um, planets, on, possibly even in stars that are much closer to us as well. And the team that discovered uh, these these planets is from Belgium. It's uh, from a Belgian university, and they actually used international uh, telescopes. They they ended up uh, uh, going to Chile, then they went, ended up going to Hawaii, and also using telescopes from, from India to confirm the results. So. In a sense, this is actually a truly international find, which gives me a lot of hope that, um, you know, one day we'll be able to cooperate internationally with various countries in searching for these different planets. And instead of trying to, you know, fight and trying to compete with each other, we might actually be able to cooperate instead in looking for these new worlds for us to settle on. So let's find out what the temperature is on these planets after after some time. So here, the first uh, planet, TRAPPIST-1b, has a temperature of about 36.5 degrees Celsius, which is actually really, really nice, but that's, of course, without the atmosphere. The atmosphere is zero because it was stripped by the star. The second planet is a little bit hotter for some reason, 94 degrees Celsius. Also no, no atmosphere, but the third planet has atmosphere and the temperature here is about 64 degrees Celsius. Now, that's obviously a little bit hotter than we can handle on a regular basis, but it's not hot enough for us to die. And so this might be a planet that we might consider to be our new home one day. And to make this even more home-like, let's add a little bit of water here and make this a beautiful world with lakes and oceans on the surface. And here we go. This looks much, much better. It still doesn't obviously have any lifelike regions and no greens and no pastures. But that's because th these features haven't really been added to the game yet. And I don't think we can create this just yet. But in terms of the actual life um, possibilities and in terms of the actual Earth similarity, this is about 85% similar to Earth. And there's about 26% chance to possibly have life on this particular planet. And although these clouds seem to be covering everything, if I were to remove the clouds, this is what the surface of this planet looks like in this game. Alright, so basically that's all I wanted to say and talk about in this video. And uh, this is a pretty exciting discovery. It uh, occurred only a few days ago for me uh, on May 2nd of 2016. This is when um, this was published in, um, in Nature Paper and this is when the scientists announced this really exciting solar system that has not one, not two, but three Earth-like planets orbiting around this really small star called TRAPPIST-1, also known as 2 mass j 2306 That's the, its official designation, and this is a uh, designation you can use to find this star in both Space Engine and in other space simulators. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you like this video, and I hope you learned something new from this. I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about something else space-related, math-related, or science-related. If you have any more suggestions, please post them in the comments below. And if it's something I haven't covered before, we might be able to make a video about it. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.